much for coming to this Health Smart Conversation, conversations about your health. Uh, we are glad that you're here today. One of the reasons why we have you uh, to the or have these Health Smart Conversations is to promote our Healthier at Home book. How many of you all have one of these books at home or you received one today? Great. Everyone should have one. If you don't have one, please let me know. Uh, we will be soon promoting this book in another way. This book is now online. And how many of you go to the internet to find out about your health, to find out about different topics, these questions, right? And we can oftentimes go and think, is this information credible? Well, now that this is online along with Medline Plus on a website called healthylearn.com, that's healthylearn.com, uh, you'll be able to access the book that we uh, give out and also uh, the Medline Plus website. Plus, there's 365 tips on how to be healthy, one for every day of the year. But uh, we do we have gathered today to talk about uh, don't blame it on aging. And I even heard some conversations going on beforehand. Uh, one person said, well, I'm here because, um, well, I tend to blame some things on aging. And I'm wondering, <laughs> is that right? So I think this is a great hot topic, and we have the pleasure of having Dr. Nancy Stiles here with us today. I do want to tell you a little bit about Dr. Stiles. Um, she received her BS in bio from, uh, biology from Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas. She also received her MD from the University of Texas of Houston and then completed her uh, residency in internal medicine at the University of Texas at San Antonio. So I'm thinking you're a fan of some teams down in Texas, am I right? You can't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to go there because you mentioned it earlier. <laughs> uh, following her residency, she was faculty at <clears throat> Duke University. <laughs> UK, <laughs> basket all the way. <laughs> a fellowship in geriatric medicine at Duke. She is board certified in internal medicine, uh, geriatric medicine, and Dr. Stiles joined UK faculty okay, in 1992. So you've been here long enough to redeem yourself. <laughs> she is an associate of Sanders Brown Center on Aging and a member of the graduate school faculty. Uh, Dr. Stiles is director of the UK Geriatric Clinic where she provides subspecialty care for older individuals with aging syndromes in adults of all ages who desire help to age successfully. So let's go ahead and welcome Dr. Sarnes. Okay, can y'all hear me? Okay. Um, yeah, I came to UK in 1992 in July after having interviewed earlier that year. Um, do y'all remember there was like this basketball game in 92? Uh -huh. Yes, I did. No one has forgotten that one. No. And I actually, during that game, was up in the hotel in Lexington uh, waiting for my interview. So I was still at Duke. Uh, yeah. And had to go interview and still got the job. <laughs> Uh, the next thing, I really want to take advantage of the concept that this is a conversation. So, from now on, I'm Nancy, okay? If you guys have a question along the way, just ask me. We'll get to talking about it then, okay? So, when we talk about aging, you know, there's several different terms that are going to float around as we, we talk about aging, if you look in the literature. A very a common term that's been used through the years is the term normal aging. Now, when I was in medical school, back, yeah, I was in medical school from 90, 1982 to 86, what we called normal aging from a memory standpoint, we now call mild dementia. So, the very concepts of what's normal and what's not have really changed through the years. Um, used to, we thought that just like macular degeneration was inevitable. Now we're finding different things that cause that. So, as more and more research has come out on aging, the very concept of normal aging is changing. And that's why this topic for this talk is really important to me, because even things that we might have taught five or ten years ago uh, that just come on normally with aging, now we know maybe due to underlying medical conditions, 
toxic exposures, injuries, and things like that. So the term that I prefer to use is more just typical aging. And we also know that there are more and more age-related diseases. The common ones, Alzheimer's disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis. But the main thing is that aging in and of itself, we don't want people to be thinking purely of as a disease. Okay? Well, when we talk about age-related diseases and things like that, there's another concept out there called successful aging. And that's one of the things that I, I hope to help people achieve, the successful aging. There's a lot of different definitions for successful e aging. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're absolutely disease-free, you've had no injuries, you have no impairments. Um, kind of the, the term, the, the focus I have for successful aging is just to look at that most optimal balance for each individual between their quality of life and longevity. So this doesn't necessarily mean just keeping somebody alive on machines. This really looks at quality of life too. And in the research on successful aging, most of it boils down to just a few areas. Nutrition, exercise, avoiding bad habits, um, avoiding those things that put you at risk for injuries, okay? Um, looking at our emotional well-being, very individualized, and also attitude. People that tend to have a positive attitude, people that are empowered, okay? In our longitudinal studies, these are the concepts that come out very strong and clear for successful aging. The other thing too, all of these things have to be very, very individualized. It's what's successful for you. As we look at those concepts and we think about what we do for ourselves, one of the things I'll encourage people to do is just kind of monitor your own health. Nutrition is really important. And so, weighing on a regular basis, having some way that you yourself can monitor your own nutritional status. Um, look at your own fluid intake, because as we do get older, and suppose we do develop some chronic diseases, one of the ways we may pick up on the fact that we're not doing very well is we may not be eating as well or getting as much fluid in. So, have an idea of what your fluid intake is, how much it takes to maintain your own hydration. Exercise, how do we monitor our own exercise? For me, is my house clean or not? That <laughs> tends to be it, okay? Yes. My dogs, I have four dogs. Can I talk dogs? Okay. Um, my dogs help me stay exercised. How many times did you need a walk that day? Okay. Uh, but something really simple to do, maybe not every day, but periodically, is get a pedometer and monitor your steps. Our goal for everybody, no, it's got to be individualized, but you'll often hear the number 10,000 steps. Okay? And what I found is when I've used one of those pedometers, you know, you'll hit that where you're just like 100 points off on the next 1,000. It really can motivate you to try to hit that next 1,000 or that next 100. Use a calendar, um, not just for medical appointments, okay, but for actually looking at your well-being. When was the last time I went out to eat? When was the last time I did? When was the last time I got together with friends? When was the last time I did anything just for me? Okay, We're kind of in that sandwich generation. So we are really at high risk for that. Um, set yourself some short-term goals and long-term goals. Uh, my office is housed at Cardinal Hill. My clinic is at Cardinal Hill. So you live and breathe rehabilitation. And one of the things that the rehabilitation therapist will do is they'll set short-term goals and long-term goals. Look at your own life. Find a particular time each week to sit down and think about you. Okay? Now everybody's going idea when that's going to be. Um, <laughs> usually the weekend, okay? Uh, Monday is never a good day for that. I can reassure you of that. So pick a day each week to think about you. Think about your health. Think about your well-being. Look, are you happy? What's not making you happy? Do you need to get help? When was the last time you saw your doctor? When was the last time you went to the dentist? Okay. I think my record was four years. 
uh, yeah, it was really scary when I went in after that. <laughs> okay, so think about those things because it's really easy. Those of us our age group for those things to slip past us. How are you sleeping? Sleep is such a reflection often of our overall health. Okay, a lot of times with depression, it may be so subconscious. We may be so busy that we're not aware of how we're doing emotionally, but our sleep will be aware. Okay, so look at how you're sleeping. Pain, anxiety, are you feeling tense? Okay, um, look at the patterns, look at the triggers. You have a headache, always on Monday. Hmm, okay. <coughs> Keep a health log, write these things down, okay? You know, my back started hurting here. I think it was because of the new yoga I did or something like that. <laughs> then a month later, it's hurting worse and you ditch the yoga. Okay? Look at those things. In talking to people about their health, when at our age level and things like that, we are usually so soft with things. People come in and talk to us, the healthcare provider, and we'll go, well, how long has it been going on? Well, a while. You know? It is so hard when we are so busy on our lives to really think, well, when did that start? Wow, you know, it's been going on at least since Christmas. You know, that's five months. I thought it had just been going on a few weeks. So that's something you can do on that calendar is put some symptoms that we need to keep an eye on. Um, and then when you sit down each week, kind of look at those things. Hmm, that hasn't gotten away. It's gone worse. Get in and you get yourself taken care of. A common thing as we get older is what we talk will term functional decline. And that can mean any function in our life. Physical function, emotional function, even our social function. Uh, most often we're referring to physical function. It's very common, but not normal, to really have a decline in your function. Research has shown that yes, as we get older, there is some weakness that sets in with our muscles, but it shouldn't be the, of the magnitude that uh, to affect our day-to-day -day function. So you should still be able to get up and walk, take a bath, okay, and things like that. Get dressed. Okay. Um, lots of things can cause this. In other terms, I, in my clinical practice, I wish I had the ICD-9 code for going downhill. Because that just sums it all up right there in how we feel. But what we want to do is we want to address this as soon as the symptoms start setting in. So, as you look at how you monitor your health, you know, maybe once a month you write down how many steps you walk. Or maybe once a week. Okay? Just sort of track that. Well, then when you look back a year later, you go, you know, I used to always get that 10,000 in. Now I'm at 8,000. What happened? So sometimes it's subclinical disease setting in that's getting us. So some of the common causes. And some of our older, typically for our older folks, as dementias, often called memory disorders, start to set in, we will see some decline in function. So often some of the symptoms are one of our older folks doesn't feel comfortable driving in traffic. Okay? because they feel nervous, okay? Because they're realizing their reflexes aren't as swift. And a lot of times what it is, is that first sign of cognitive problems, they're slowing between seeing something, processing it, figuring out what it is, and then doing something about it. And these are very smart people who are realizing, I'm not feeling good about driving. They may not be able to articulate what it is, but we can see that change in their function. Okay. Arthritis and how it affects us physically, how much it affects our ability to walk the dog, uh, the chair that we sit in, subtle things like that. But when it comes to arthritis, we want to get on top of it early and take care of whatever we can with that. Anemia. Back when I was in medical school, our last slips would come with different normal ranges depending on what decade the person was in. Well, now we know that anemia is not a normal uh, with aging. And yet I will still see some physicians that went through their training like I did, okay, that are still chalking up some anemia just to normal aging. Hypothyroidism can cause that. Emphysema, also called COPD, 
renal insufficiency, depression, these are some of our most common causes for functional decline. 